Good afternoon, Church of God. Um, actually, everything is first, first for me. This is the first time I'm speaking here in, in, front of, in front of the church. This is the first time I'm wearing this one, to be honest. That's true. I'm not comfortable. Not that comfortable wearing this, but I know who I'm re representing with, and that's him. And he is worthy of this one. So, yeah. And this is the first time that I appreciate this pulpit. You know what? Because without this, probably I cannot stand up for the rest of my. I cannot stand up straight for the rest of my my message today. It's really hard uh, when Pastor Freddy uh, sent me a message. I think that's ten days ago, and asking me if I can give one Sunday message, um, my answer would probably say no. I would probably say no right away. I know I can't do it. I know I'm not ready. I know I'm, I just don't want to feel myself embarrassed here in front of you. Uh, that's who are knowledgeable in his words. But before I respond him with the message, I, I pray to God. I ask him what he wants me to do. If I am really ready for this one. If this is really his task that given me, I'm asking for the sign. And he said, yes. Loud and clear, he My, the answer is yes. And also, I remember what Paul said in, in Thessalonians. He said that, amidst of all, all the um, opposition from, from, um, from Philippi, he's still able to give the message accurately. To the people there, you know, he's been he's been he's been beaten almost to death. He's been dragged um, all the way to the to the to the prison, but still he's still able to give the message accurately amidst of amidst of the opposition. And then I'm thinking of myself: the only opposition that I feel right now is myself. Why can't I do this? Why can't I? I mean. By by thinking of everything what is done, I mean, I'm almost I'm almost have that near death experience when I was in the Philippines, and then I've been here. I met Pastor Prady. I've been saved since 2011, since when I met him. I mean, a lot of a lot of uh, good things that happened to me that I need I need to appreciate with God. And at least I can I can reward him with a little bit by sharing his words today. Well, let's start with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, once again for giving us this great opportunity so that we can study your word, so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, you commanded us in Peter that we need to grow into the grace and to the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is the time, Lord, at the moment like this that we're studying your word. We are growing. This is the right beginning to grow into the grace and to the, the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. So thank you for this time, Lord. Thank you for the church that you give us, you, you bring us today here safe. And Lord, if by chance also we commit any sins, we know that you are worthy. And you know that we also need to be worthy in front of you. So we also learn, we also know by when John said in this first John 1 9 that's if we confess our sins you are faithful and just to give us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so we'll limit to you we'll limit to you our sins in privacy of heart if we have one if we have some and we're trusting in your word that you will forgive us our sins we'll pray Thank you for this time now, I believe, Father. Thank you that um, you gave us this uh, day so that we can study your word. Thank you for giving us the privilege so that we can always having a fellowship in you by just naming our sins to you. And I will pray now that you will help us understand your word that we're going to be taking up today as we're taking up the three pieces of salvation. That was one of the important subjects in our in our salvation lord but yet not all churches are teaching this one not all christians knows this and even us that already knows this the already familiar with this sometimes we we have a tendency to forget this so 
Thank you for having this time that we can study these words to you together in your name. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. My mouth's dry. Um, as we know, the salvation has three pieces. We always study this. I think I learned this one four years ago. I mean, we're studying this with Pastor Prady. And during that time, I have a hard time figuring out which, which this verse belongs. If this is belongs to the justification, to the sanctification, or the glorification. And until now, there have been some uh, verses that I, I still have a hard time figuring out on which this verse belongs. So I think this verse is very important. Uh, this subject is very important, the trepidation of salvation. <coughs> How to do this, Pastor Paley? Again, salvation has three phases. The first one is the <coughs> justification. What am I doing? There we go. Justification. Does anybody know what is the justification? And we are free from? Free from the presence of sins, the power of sins, yeah. and the, 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 penalty. the penalty. penalty of sin. The justification is when we are free from the penalty of sins. This is at the moment of faith. Um, I'm thinking when I'm studying this one, this is, the justification is, I mean, to be saved is not that hard at all. In fact, it is very easy to be saved. My mouth is dry, excuse me. All you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ for everlasting life. Because as like what, I, in what the author said in the salvation, this is, uh, this is free. This is only a one-time event. The only, this is only happened once. Uh, it only takes like 10 seconds to a person, depends on the, on the person, on how do you believe, how do you react. Um, but most of the time, it only takes 10 seconds, 20 seconds, maybe a minute. But only few are saved, believe it or not. Not all, not all people are saved. People out there are dying. I mean, I'm, I talked with Pastor Prady this morning. I, uh, I told him that in my, in my own perspective, not even all Christians are saved. And he asked me that you need to clarify that because you know that should be something to be to be needs a clarification, especially that how come that not all, not even all Christians are saved. I can see this because when I was in the Philippines, I'm serving the church. I thought I'm serving the Lord. I thought I'm doing all the good things. Uh, to the Lord in His glory, you know, I'm going to these um, um, conferences, some church activities. Almost all of the activities I've been there, but um, since 2011, after I, I I I learned that that's the first time that I've been saved. I'm thinking uh, when I was in the Philippines. I'm not really saved at all, you know. Um, I'm, I'm, I am serving the Lord. I am doing all things to glorify Him, but yet I can think that I'm not saved because for me, 
I miss the bullseye. I am I am studying on on what's I mean I mean I'm studying the church doctrine, the church where I belong before, but not what the Bible has been teaching. You know, yeah, I believe in Jesus Christ that uh, he is the second person of the Trinity. Yes, I believe that uh, he was born with a virgin. I believe that he died and he raised in, in the three days, he raised again and then he, he ascended into heaven. I believe that he is sitting at the right hand of the Father. But I don't believe, I don't understand what the just, uh, what the John 3.16 means. What Jesus means when he said that, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The tail end of that verse is the one that I don't understand. I know that he died. I know that, I know that he came into this world to save me, to pay for my sin. But the thing that I don't understand is the second part, which is the most important part, I think, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. And that's the one that sometimes all of these people are missing. Some, there's some cold, sometimes they're knocking on your doors, um, wanting to do a good works. They even thought that they're doing good works. They even thought that they, they glorify God by doing it. But the truth is they're not. They're, not. they're just jumping into the discipleship's role before they even become a part of the family of God. And by learning that, I ask myself, what can I do to help um, give this message accurately to these people? How can I help them understand what it really means to be saved? It is free. God paid for that one 2,000 years ago. He died on the cross because He want me, He want us to have a relationship with Him. We have that gift. All of us, all of the people in the world after Jesus died have that gift. But it's on us if we will accept, if we will receive that gift. And that's the gift of salvation. That's the gift that's supposed to be intended to each and every one of us. And yet, we don't have it. Some of it don't have it. We are lucky we have it. But some of them don't have it. What we can do about it. It's only 10 seconds in our life, but yet the benefits that we can receive is a lot. We're going to have a baptism of the Holy Spirit, the moment of faith. We're going to have an indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit, and it will not let us. Not only that, the, not only the, the Spirit, but also the God the Father and the God the Son. The triune God will, will stay in our, our self at the moment of faith. We have that feeling ministry of the Holy Spirit. That's the, the ministry that will give us power, give us that wisdom so that we can understand the word. We can understand how it means really to, be, to serve him. How can I do to glorify him? We have that feeling. Although we can lose the feeling at the moment we commit sins, um, also we can, we can restore it by by exercising the first John 1 9, which we do a while ago. And then also the sealing of the Spirit. We've been sealed until the day of Christ, until, until we've been glorified. That's the, the sealing of the Spirit is one proof that we are saved. We're not worried. We cannot lose that salvation. We cannot lose that gift that's in us. And then the lastly, we can have that spiritual gift. We earn that by just simply believing at the moment of faith. All of us have gift. We have a gift of, um, of giving. We have a gift of, um, of helping others. We have a gift of, uh, like was Pastor Pedro's gift, on teaching, help us understand freely his word. All of us have gifts, and it depends on us. It depends on us in if we will use it, we will use that gift to glorify him. So, yeah, a lot of benefits that we can earn at the moment of faith, and yet not all people are saved. Not all people out there are dying. What we can do, what we can contribute to glorify God. 
Any questions before we move on to the sanctification, the second phase? I know you're trying to help me here by not asking questions, but <laughs> <laughs> if you do, I also appreciate it. And I, I, I asked Pastor Freddy, I asked Pastor Freddy that uh, if I have questions, that if you raise some questions that I cannot answer, that he is willing to help me. <laughs> <laughs> he's, on, he's on my back today. And by the way, I forgot to, to, to open some slides. This is all of the justifications. This is the phase one, the past. This is happened once. This is a one-time event. And I have been saved from the penalty of sins. You know, we've been, we've been, we've been saved. Jesus Christ paid for that sin on the cross. Although I learned that in our, our um, Thursday night study that I thought before that my sins already been forgiven when Jesus died on the cross. But the truth is, it's not. He only paid for my sin. In John said when, when he met Jesus for the first time, he said, uh, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's, that's the sin that Jesus took when, when he died on the cross. But the sins that we commit every day, we, should, we will do that by exercising the first John 1.9. And that's uh, what it means I have been saved from the penalty of sin. And it is free. It didn't cost us anything except for our um, on how we react. If we will accept that gift, if we will want to receive it, it's free. It didn't cost us, even though it cost the Father his only son. But for us, no, it's free. And it is for all Christians. The moment of faith, you become Christians. You become a, fo a follower of Jesus. This is the time now that you can understand his words. You can have, have a fellowship with him. The word of God now is not, um, is not, is not foolishness to us because we've already been saved. And this is now all of our works. All of the works that we do to glorify him is rewardable by the gold, the silver, and the precious stones. And this is the, this is the verse that proves there that it's free. It will not cost us. It's in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Okay. So any questions? No? Thank, no. thank you. <laughs> and the next, the next uh, phase of salvation is the sanctification. Does anybody know what's sanctification? We are free from the power of sins. We are free from the power of sins, but yet that's the sins that we always struggle every day. That's the sins that uh, we always fail because although we've been saved, although our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit now, it's the temple of God, but yet we have that sin nature. We have that sin that's continued wanting us, urges us to do, to do, to commit sins, so that we cannot have that that fellowship with God, and that's that's the constant struggles. Yes, the sanctification, and we are free from. This is um, where are we at now. This is the present time. This is for us Christians. And I have been saved from the power of sins. You know, sins have, sins is the, the reason, that, again what I said, the reason why we cannot have that fellowship with God in the first place. And then it is costly. The author said it is costly. It costs us our time. It involves uh, financially, it costs us money. And then it's, it costs us our works. It costs my knees to shake right now. <laughs> Yeah, it is costly. <laughs> but let's start with time. It cost us our time. I remember the, the recent study. I think Kuyari told me about the recent study and what is the, what is the hardest uh, time of the day to be awake. And what is it? Two o'clock, right? And that's where I start our study. And that's why I cannot blame Bo. He's doing that. <laughs> I mean, that's true. It's really hard.
we should be we should be at the beach right now the weather is so nice out out there at the beach or we should be at at the park enjoying the fellowship with our our family or we should be at the mall yeah shopping or yeah we should be sleeping by now to to recover our body from that uh long week of, of work but here we are we are we are here listening with his words so yeah the author said it is costly it cost us our time but it is really costly at all my question is does it really costly when you're considering the fact that everything what has been done for us by thinking of all of the blessings that we've been received you know for me i think it's not costly i think it's not even enough because he is worth everything that we should do to glorify him he is that great he cost us it cost him his only son the son that he be, he said that this is my beloved son in in Matthew 3 he witnesses that he said this is my beloved son whom i will bless and yet he able to turn his back away from that son that he loves so that you so that all of us can have that everlasting life so that all of us can be with him someday in heaven i think it's not costly i think he deserved it you know um i'm a dodger fan does anybody know what's the dodgers los angeles dodgers baseball yeah i'm a dodgers fan and they are they're heading into the world series for the first time for the first time in 29 years and they defeated the chicago cubs the defending champion and then and then the the mbfa on that national league championship series is justin turner and what's the name of the other one no it's uh chris taylor justin turner he has the uh, third highest ops in the history of baseball in playoffs ops means on this percentage and plus slugging percentage third highest the the only two players that ahead of him if you are familiar with baseball you should probably know Bib Root and Lou Gehrig that's the only two that's ahead of him so he should deserve that honor to be the National League MVP and then we're, we're talking about God there's this God he is he created the heaven and earth he sent, he sent his son here into this world so that we can have that everlasting life and then he even owns that time so he should deserve that time that we spend today he should deserve that time the time that we spend every moment of the things like this when we're studying his word so yeah it's cost us it's it's costly it cost us our time but by serving it to him by giving it to him by that stud, study like this i don't think it's costly at all and then the next one is financially now this is the one that um, some christians are not comfortable with on uh, or talking because you know for for some reasons but for me um i'm comfortable um speaking with this one because yeah it cause us it involves us with money on our way here on the church from from our work or sometimes we go to the conference or or some seminars um, it involves that money it cost us our money and then like this one we should um we've been we've been ta we've been we've been taught to to give back to the church paul said that um god loves the cheerful giver so we ought to give to the church and i think we should because especially with the church like what we have today if if we found benefit if we found that uh, we we've been blessed with something by listening to his word by going to this church we should give back to the church we should support this church because the truth is no church that can stand without the support from from its members no church the only church that can stand i guess without our support is the church that what jesus said in in matthew 16 
on the top of this rock I will build my own church. No one, even the the force of the devil can destroy it. That's the only church, the church that's inside in us, that's the only church that's not gonna be destroyed. But this church that what we have, it will not last without our support. So yeah, it's it is costly actually in our in, in our uh, perspective financially, but to him who owns everything, I don't think it is costly. And then the last one is, yeah, like this one, it works. Like what I'm doing today. <laughs> it is really hard, I'm telling you. It's, it's, it's not easy. I have this, my, my, my tongue is twisting. Yeah. <laughs> I feel cold even though I'm, I'm sweating. It's hard. But but I know who's who's the one that I'm. I want to please. I want to please him, and this is this is uh, this is this is a good start for my growth in, into ultimately into maturity. So I mean I'm not in, encouraging you to to do something like this, especially if you're having tried it yet, because it's not really that good. <laughs> but again, is it it is worth it. On, on, on doing this. Let's like, like what I said, this is the first time I appreciate this pulpit. I have something to hold on. <laughs> but it is worth it. At least you don't have to worry about a string breaking. <laughs> You're doing great, Nick. Thank you. Yeah, this is on us disciples. And this is... Uh, uh, the the verse that centers on on the justific on the sanctification is Romans five eight and nine, um, but God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Yeah, we will not worry. It's nice to know that we will not worry about the the punishment in hell anymore we will not worry about the pain the problems that we will suffer away from apart from him because we will be with him we can we can share that by doing the salvation by having our salvation and again this is this is our time today this is where we are right now this is where we have that constant struggles every day we commit sins and you are so great that he is he is that he is that good he is that nice that he wants us to be always always be in fellowship with him he gives us the first john 1 9 and just simply naming our sins to him he will cleanse us he will forgive us our sins and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that was um nice to know to learn So any questions though? Oh, I'm almost done, Pastor Brady. Oh. You have two and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> any questions? Oh. Just, just to add to what you're saying, on the left side, you know, when it when you are justified, that makes you a Christian. Mm-hmm. But on phase two, when you are doing good works like what you're doing, now you're a disciple. You know, we're working as a discipleship. Justification results in being a Christian, mm-hmm. but obeying and applying his word makes you a disciple, which is a learner, a follower, and so on. So just supporting what you've already said. Yeah. Jesus said that if you love me, obey me. Right. If you love me, carry your own cross. This is this is this time right now. It works as a discipleship. This is this is the one that we can we can have the reward someday. We can have <coughs> gold, silver, and precious stones, or even wood, hay, and stubble. And yeah, thanks for helping. Anyway, Megan, yeah, sure. Sanctification as we're the minister, the minister and the ambassador. That's the phase that we're in. Mm-hmm, yeah, yeah. We we should re- represent him like the ambassadors. We are ambassadors for Christ. Like for example, if you are an ambassador representing USA to the other nation, 
you should well present what 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 the country wants you to 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 be to to to, to happen on that country. What you are you representing? You're representing the, the United States of America. And if you cannot represent that, he has the United States of America can maybe can lose the the reputation on that country. Maybe the people that lives there will will have a a miss um, understanding what really the USA means. So, as an ambassador, we should we should learn what's what's uh, what God wants us to do. And again, this is about on our growth. On our it depends on our maturity. It depends on how it uh, how, how we take His words regularly. What um, yeah? What's what's one us how how us how we want to serve him and then lastly is the glorification now the glorification i have not much something to say about this because this is now we are now face to face with god that means we are now this is in the future we are now free. I will be saved from the presence of sins. We are now free from the presence of sins. That also means I'm almost done. <laughs> <laughs> I feel good now, actually. <laughs> have, you, have you experienced that moment when you're climbing up on the hill and then you almost uh, reach the top and then you cannot barely lift your feet? That's what I feel right now. <laughs> It is really hard, but I'm glad I did this. I'm glad I'm doing this because I know what, who am I want to place. I want to honor him. I want to place him. I want, I want, to, I want him to tell me in the future and tap me in the back and say, good job, thou um, faithful servant. What is this? That what is this? Yeah, that's what I want to hear. In, in the future by doing something like this. So, yeah, I will be saved from the presence of sins. We are being saved, and this is where we're face to face with God. We cannot do something, anything anymore about it because it's, everything is in Him now. This is probably, we can say that, I wish I did more, Lord. Yeah, I wish in everything I do when I was still alive, I'm honoring you. I wish I, I wish I, I, I hope, um, I wish I, I hope you with, uh, with um, spreading your word, teaching your word, giving your word, especially to those dying. So yeah, I'm not saying in, uh, something much about this because this is now we are now in, in face to face with God. We had now with the glorified bodies and. The verse that says about this is in Romans, Romans, in Romans 13, 11. And do this knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. So by studying the three pieces of salvation, I have observed, I'm observing something. I have questions that I raised to myself. And the first question now is, even though to be saved is not that hard at all, even though to be saved is very easy, all you have to do is to believe in Jesus for everlasting life. But how come there's a lot of people that are dying out there? How come that I, I, I said not even all Christians are saved. And what we are going to do about it? How can we contribute so that these people, so that these dying people will be saved like us? And the second question that I raise, yeah, although it is costly, it costs our time financially, it costs us our works, but is it really costly? Is God the one that owns everything? Does, does he really didn't deserve all of it? I mean, for me, all of the single time that we spend in, in learning his goodness and studying his words together, 
I think it is worth it. The single penny that we've been spent, again, it is worth it. And also the good works. We've been commanded to do good. We've been commanded to works as an evangelist. Evangelists. So I think it is great. So pretty, um, I think I'm done. Do you have something to add? Before um, I close the number. No, I think you did a great job. <laughs> no, please. I don't deserve that, please. No. Well, um, I think everybody would agree that, that this is the, you know, as a, as a local church, we're always trying to equip the brethren. That's the principle from Ephesians 4. And so I'm not afraid to share the pulpit as long as I know there's a consistency. And Mick has demonstrated this since 2011. Mm -hmm. He is uh, he's there on Wednesdays, he's there on Thursdays, he's here on Sundays, he's up here in the front leading in music, mm -hmm. helping out with music, and then he's just really, I've seen him make great strides uh, over, the, over the past few years. And I just noticed that when he we would interact during the Bible studies, his questions are much more refined. So he's, he is really growing and uh, really advancing in his walk with God. And that's the result of consistency. You don't tell someone you're, you're mature. It's, it just becomes obvious. Mm -hmm. And so I've watched him over the course of time, and he is just... Uh, I, I don't know what you guys think. You think he's got this down? Yes. I think what I see of him is like he speaks from his heart. Yeah. Not really like too much more on the. I know he has to go with the word for word, but mm -hmm. most of the the way he talk, right. um, listening is like some of them is come from his heart, like just you know he just opens his mouth and coming from his heart. That's it. Yeah. And 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 it, it shows. And uh, it, as long as, you know, when we, it's good that he speaks from the heart, and I know he has spoken from the heart, but he's spoken the word, mm -hmm. which is, I think, important as well. There's a lot of people that speak from the heart that have nothing to offer, um, but Mick is different. He speaks from the heart, but he's, if you notice, his, his, he's very careful with what he says. Uh, he didn't even want you guys to clap afterwards because his intention is to bring all honor to his Lord, you see? So it's little things like that that really come out loud and clear during the studies. And when we, have, when we meet during the week, we will occasionally meet and train. Um, he's just really demonstrated uh, growth and maturity. And so when I asked him, it was actually... During the week, when I asked him if he would be open, I just, I just sensed that he would say yes. So when I sent him a text, he responded and said, "Oh, sure," but it'd have to be God using me. And I said, "Well, hopefully God would use you. It would just be His volition that would be in the way." And he took it. He did not. He did not hesitate. And so he, um, he is an example of what we're trying to do in this local assembly. We've got good teachers here, Steve, and Morris, and others who have come up here in the pulpit to communicate sound truth. And so this is what we're trying to establish in Church of Hope. We want people who are consistent, someone who is, you, you can tell that their God is a priority. You can tell by how they uh, handle and communicate the scriptures both. Are you awake, Bob? <laughs> uh, one thing you need to your sense of humor I, I'm much better saying but anyway uh, I know you you spoke from the heart you have good intentions and everything else I want to complain to you do it again. <laughs> but yeah, in closing, this is what it's all about. I mean, as mentioned, if, as he mentioned earlier, he's not even sure a lot all Christians are saved. And if you, if you really let that sink, 
Um, if that's true, then that's not good. And uh, he gave the example of you know being actively involved in church, but that doesn't make you a Christian, right? So you can go to church, you can serve, you can go to these conferences, but if you don't know that you have everlasting life by simply believing in him for it, then there's a high probability that you don't have it. So when you take content like this and teach it, you at least know that the person is going to have a good understanding, or at least a pretty good understanding of what <coughs> salvation entails, right? So it's not just being born again, believing he died and buried and rose again, but going into the actual promise of Jesus himself. So that way you're now, it's now between the individual and Jesus Christ and his promise. And that's what he clearly communicated, especially when he was under the justification side of the slide. So once you pass through that, then you can explain that salvation also is going to assist you with empowering you to live for Christ. So that, like he mentioned at the end, uh, God will say, well done, I've been faithful servant. So I think he did a fantastic job and uh, hopefully he will be open to doing this again in the near future. Do you guys have any questions for him? Before we oh, Mom? No, uh, I just want to say that this is the proof that our church is growing. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'll take this kind of growth over numerical growth any day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there, it's easy to grow the church numerically, just tickle the ears and say mm -hmm. the right things. But I would rather have someone who is, you know, really digging into the Word of God and communicating something that would bring honor and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this is why we do what we do, and this is some of the byproduct of what we do. Let's put him in the lineup. Huh? Let's put him in the lineup for your breakfast. I'll take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? I was just going to say that, in all fairness, Rick, one of the things that I think of through the years is that one of the greatest things that Paul had said to us in Scripture is when he had some thorn in the flesh, quote unquote, where something physically seemed to be happening to him. We don't necessarily know what that is, but um, when he beseeched the Lord Jesus three times that this would be taken from him, he received back from him, he says, my power is made perfect in weakness. My grace is made perfect in weakness. So then Paul, when he realized that in his weakness he could be made strong, Paul said, therefore I would much rather boast in my infirmities boast in my infirmities that Christ might be strong in me. For when we are weak, he went on to say, then we are strong. I am so happy when you are weak. I am so happy when we are weak, any of us. Because when we are weak, having ourselves trusting in his power, then we are strong in him, even though we have a weakness in our physical body or whatever the case might be. So. We appreciate the demonstration of your weakness today, which is actually strength in Christ. So thank you. All right. If there's nothing else, make what if you uh, close us in prayer. Yeah. Well, thank you for giving me this time. Thank you that uh, um, even though it is it is my first time, you, you help, you're helping me by not asking a lot of questions. I appreciate that. Father God, thank you once again, Lord, that we are able to study your word uh, loudly and clearly as we know that even Paul, even amidst of all the physical beating that he's been experienced when he is in Philippi, still he able to give your message accurately. And thank you that um, you, you have, we have that spirit, the Holy Spirit in us that gives us, helps us understand your word. So thank you, Father God, Lord. Um, I will pray now that the word that we gonna that we hear today that will stay in us. We can keep it. That's gonna be um, one one the starting of our growth into the maturity, dear God. And I wanna thank you also for Pastor Prady for his continued uh, willingness to to teach us um, how to be equipped so that 
one day when we face the world, when we face the reality on how to represent you, we are ready. So thank you for all of these things. And we'll pray now also, dear God, that you will bless the food that we are about to partake outside and also the fellowship that comes afterwards. Thank you for all of these things and all of this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.